Good morning. You listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, I'm in the Durkin Deltal space at the Hospitality Design Show in Vegas, and I'm with Lee Blair and Mark Page. Guys, good morning. Good morning, Kemp. Good morning. Actually, Mark's the first time I've interviewed you. You're fairly new with Durkin, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Lee, let's start with you. You're the global head of hospitality and the senior vice president of the hospitality division. Is that right? Yes, correct. First, most people know Durkin on the soft side is the market share leader in this business, has been for some time. You make products on the soft side for both rooms and public spaces, and most of the products that you sell in this market are tufted, right? That is correct, Kim, but they're all tufted. All right. Let's talk first about business conditions. Most people have heard that the hospitality market is one of the leading commercial sectors as far as coming out of this recession. How's your business been doing? It's been doing very, very well. This year, we're up about 30% over last year, and from 10 to 12, we were up 33%. So we've grown significantly over the last three years, with this year being the the leading year in growth. So it's really rebounding nicely. We see probably a good four years of this ahead of us, barring any unforeseen tragedy or, you know, disaster. It's all positive. Is this a combination of pent-up demand as we went through this recession and also new construction? It's beginning. We're seeing some new construction now, and we've got a nice pipeline of new construction over the next three to four years, but it's mostly pent-up demand and refurbishment, and that was a result of natural cycles of seven years, but also the fall-off for those two and a half years that we had when we fell off of a cliff. Basically, that just exacerbated and it made the pent-up demand such a large bubble, and that's what we're experiencing now. What kind of business trends are you seeing in the hospitality space as we come through this recession and into recovery? From 11 and 12, which was the beginning of the rebound, we saw a lot of rooms renovations, so rooms carpet. And we're we're really seeing that moving more into public space. Our public space sales are up significantly over last year. So rooms are still being refurbed in in a large way, but the public space areas are now really coming into play. And that's really where all of us make our hay. Is the cycle time in the rooms changed? A good question. Ten years ago, it was five years, and then about eight years ago, seven years ago, it trended up more to six. Now we're looking at seven and eight years. So, yes, it has pushed out. And that's a matter of economics, really. But is it also a factor of performance? It's more of a factor of hotels having to keep up with each other to get customers in the room. Performance is really not the issue. Do you sell any modular into this market? We do. We are not where I want us to be, and Mark Page is Mark's working on that. We've seen a lot of move to tile and some of the limited service properties, so it's certainly something that's on our radar. But we do have an offering, but Mark's working on beefing that offering up. One last question. We are in this space, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the interview, and Durkin is on a few of the sides, and Dale Tile is on two of the sides, and I believe that's a first. Talk a little bit about that, if you would. Well, it is a first. We've done a good job networking internally together, and we have team meetings, but we haven't come to market in a trade show environment together. We think it's a smart thing we, to do. We have good synergy, and we're able to network with each other very well here versus being on the other side of the, of the trade show. So it's something we will continue to do in the future. And with some of these big property companies, they like to buy from one company, don't they? That's correct. You know, you're actually able to bundle, get better pricing, you know, better economies from one vendor, and hopefully less headaches. Lee, you said when we were talking before this interview that you're seeing a movement toward more demand for American-made products. Talk about that, if you would. You know, Kim, I think it was born out of reliability, both from quality and service, being able to service this U.S. domestic market in a, in a reliable fashion, to uh, have our customers be certain of their delivery and also from a quality standpoint. But I think from a politically, even on both sides of the aisle, of Republicans and Democrats, it's a political football now that they're both pushing down the field. So I think timing is absolutely perfect for this to be good for not only the country, but for for reliability as well. So these big property owners, this is something that's important to them. Yes, well, we hear it constantly. We're hearing customers say they will only buy U.S. products now, which I haven't heard that in, in probably 15, 20, 25 years. So we're hearing it constantly. So we're going to see those little cards that say, please hang your towel over the rack to to maybe see in cards that say everything in this hotel room is made in the United States? I wouldn't be surprised. Very interesting. Okay, great, Lee. Well, let's move to you, Mark. You, I believe, were with Brenton's last year, and you've just moved over here. How long have you been with Durkin? started with Durkin on the August the 1st last year, so uh, I'm, I'm getting close to my first year. And your responsibility as your senior director of color and design, 
for hospitality, which means you do mostly product development, right? Yeah, most of what we do is is color and pattern design, leading by design, which is which is what our focus should be at the moment. Dealing with outside collaborators in design, which we've got four on board at the moment, but also pushing the envelope on where we have been historically as a business, where I see market trends have gone to. Uh, and very quickly in the last few months, been able to make huge changes, I think, in design. At Dick. Well, it's a different medium for you because you're going from uh, working with Axe Minster to going to Tufted Carpet, right? It is in, in a lot of ways. It's a huge plus for us. Uh, most of what we do has a cut and loop characteristic to either a CYP product or a print product. Um, and I think what we see in the marketplace trend-wise right now is less use of color, still large-scale patterns, simpler. But design is starting to focus more on textural issues, so loop, stipple and the combination, the type of thing that Axminster just cannot achieve. But I see that it's sort of the next generation of, of, of where the industry wants the carpet product to go. And this product on the floor, very striking. It's part of your synthetics uh, line, is that right? Synthesis. It's a proprietary technology that, that Durkin has patent pending on. It's cut and loop. Um, it's very, very crisp, clear, dye injection, 25 DPI. What we've, what we've shown on the booth here is, as you would see in a car, show a concept vehicle it's a concept design it's a 12 foot by 12 foot synthesis base that's designed to complement the surface print image that's very very striking and another trend question are you seeing much change in what these big property owners are looking for in this public space carpet again we're seeing growth in cyp um, again it, it gives you an axe to look but it also gives you that cut and loop effect and we're seeing huge growth in, in that this year and we're starting to see the Axminster guys really getting pushed they just say they cannot achieve that loop look and, and we can we're making some changes internally to extend our pattern repeat capabilities so again we'll knock on the door of the Axminster business and hopefully take some uh, some market share away from those those teams all right Marvel, welcome to Durkin did you have to move as, as part of this job change big big change we, we actually lived in Las Vegas for most of my career with Brinton's in the States and now we, we moved to Chattanooga so we've gone from barren desert to more rainfall than I think I've ever seen in the UK in my entire life this year in, in the Georgia area so yeah huge change how many years have you been over here in the States came over here in 94 with Brinton's um, a 25 year was a 25 year employee fourth generation so yeah it, it's, it's a huge change for me Okay, guys, thanks for spending time with us. Again, we've been talking to Mark Page and Lee Blair in the Durkin space, and you've been listening to Kemp Har and FloorDaily.net.